everyone, Abby here, Purple Cottage Crafts, and welcome back to another video here on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the amazing vintage and antique fabric haul that I just picked up a couple days ago from Rediscovery's Vintage Clothing in Butte, Montana. Now I do have a video um, where I walked through Brian, who is the owner and proprietor of um, the Rediscovering Vintage Clothing Store. And I did like a little vloggy bit walking through his store and I will link that video below. I also shared with you my first um, ever purchase slash haul from his shop. I will link that video below as well. I think they might be together. I can't remember, it's been a few years since I did that. So we went there a couple days ago. I had some birthday money and, um, and I also just, you know, had some mad money. And so I went in there shopping for a little bit and it was an amazing time. And Brian is such a great guy. Uh, more to come about him later because I'll be going back and doing some more vlogging when I'm in the store. And um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of jump on in. So when I walked in, he was like, Abby, how you doing? And he actually told me he had this set aside uh, for the day that I came in because I did go into um, chat with him right after Steve and I first moved to Montana this past summer. I think it was like... Uh, first of August when I went in there to say hi to him we got here like mid-July and so unfortunately somebody cut the front cover off he thinks that it was like a uh, a display of like violets or something like that purple violet so that is a bummer but I, I love this and I'm going to um, keep this of course my permanent collection this will not be torn apart or anything like that um, I'm going to do some kind of a slow stitch textile collage and I'm just going to stick it on the front of this so I can cover up where somebody tore this off but the hardware is still here and it actually works and that is not common at least in my searches online and in uh, brick and mortar shops I have never found a photo album that I loved that had all of the um, mechanisms and the hardware and it actually would work and so this is the first one and, and it's purple so I just love it and I think this is just such a beautiful piece to add to my collection and here is the back side beautiful soft velvet I just love this it's so soft to the touch and it's just beautiful to me now this is also a first with this um, uh, photo album I have never crossed a photo album like this that actually has lavender pages inside so I was really excited about that and so it says to Mimi from looks like it says Burger like hamburger <laughs> Johnson <laughs> that's what it looks like it says I don't know but anyway so there are no cabinet cards inside and I don't care about that because I have a slew I can put some in if I want to I'm kind of thinking about actually doing some of my slow stitch uh, textile collage pieces and maybe just kind of showcasing and displaying them in here pieces that I'm going to be keeping for myself so I will definitely share with you guys when I get to that project down the road I mean these are all the same of course but it's just beautiful how they're this gorgeous lavender and all the aging around the edges and you will definitely see down the road me um, putting in some of my own uh, you know slow stitch textile pieces so very excited for that project all right and next up is this beautiful beautiful crocheted purple dress this is this absolutely absolutely gorgeous and i just love this so much so one of my subscribers slash crafty friends left me a comment on my most recent video where i was kind of giving you a sneak peek of what i'm going to be sharing with you in detail in today's video marcia taylor she said that purple crochet dress would have covered a bottle of dish soap and that her mom used to crochet these so i'm really glad that you shared that with me because um, that gives me a great way to you know display this in my future craft room so i love that thank you so much for telling me okay next up are these linen napkins so I have not ironed all of these things yet I know I know huge gasp I know because I love to iron but I have not gotten my iron out yet to um, easily accessible I should say to iron all my linen so please pardon that they're wrinkly <laughs> that you are fresh out of the laundry so here we have the pink one oops I think that's upside down there we go sorry for the shadow of my um, tripod you guys it's the weird lighting and I'm kind of doing this later in the day so I really apologize for that we are so close to getting um, being able to move into the front part of the cabin that we're living in right now and once that happens I can set up my craft corner and it will be um, better you know better videoing setup than this so I do apologize and then here is another pink I don't know are were these supposed to be like cocktail like napkins or like luncheon napkins or something I mean it seems like it would be since there is an embroidered piece right there but I don't know I've never seen any quite this small before so let me know in the comment section because I would love to uh, find out there's that one almost done we got some grapes 
and then we have this pair. So this was a set of nine, so very happy to have these in my collection. All right, and then now we have these two um, like flower sack towel type of uh, material. And this is the image on each of the corners. Very, very pretty. Like it, I think they're the same. Oh no, I'm mistaken. So it's just on two of the, two or three? No, just two. So we two corners have this, and then the other two corners have this design. So really happy to have these. A lot of material there. Again, I got two of those. Okay, next up is this tea towel. I love this slub fabric here. It is just so amazing. And it is just such a nice kind of rough texture. And what that means is that it's a type of material that is not smooth. It has bits of, you know, it's uneven, um, an uneven fabric, if that makes any sense. You guys can kind of see the little knots and stuff on there. This stuff is so fantastic for texture in your different projects. Um, I've embroidered on it before and just use it in you know general fabric purposes and journaling purposes. So really excited to have that. Let's see, and I have two of these. These are a little bit different color. This one, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's just because of age or not, but this one is kind of more like it's been lightly, lightly coffee dyed. It hasn't been, but it looks like it is in real life to me. And then here's this one here. And these are, again, some more um, towels. And these are from France. Brian is just this font of knowledge, this guy. He is just so knowledgeable with so many different types of textiles and fabrics, um, you know, doll collecting, vintage doll collecting. And he's a huge classic movie fan. So you can just imagine the geek out session that he and I had first time I went into his shop. Poor Angie had to sit there and listen to us go on and on about old movies. So but anyway, he just has some great things. And he has um, tags and whatnot on um, quite a bit of his items there. Some of them don't, but that's kind of the cool thing about it because you kind of chat about it. And, you know, he'll tell you how much something is. So it's just a lot of fun there. I just really love it. So here's this beautiful piece here and I grabbed this one. Uh, again, it's more of that slubby kind of linen and I love it because this will be great for some different um, springtime, um, you know, early summer type of um, projects that I'm going to be doing that I have on the list, the ever growing long list. And then here is just kind of a remnant from another, from a different set. And so here's that. This is a really nice texture as well. Okay, now moving on to some of the fabrics. All right, so here is this beautiful Dacron fabric from the 1950s. I guess it doesn't matter which way I do it. They're upside down and right side up there. Just really, really pretty. So just this gorgeous fabric. And I got one yard of this. He has a lot of um, fabric bolts, fa fabric on the bolts from like 20s and the 30s and you know, like 1910s era. And then here is another remnant. Isn't this absolutely gorgeous, you guys? It's so beautiful. And I love these holes where the buttons used to be. Or some type of hanging mechanism. I don't know exactly because it wasn't on there. But this will be great for all of the lovely projects and things that I like to do. Um, let's do this one here. This one, I, I won't be able to show you the whole thing in frame because it's too big. But you, it's, you know, this length. Okay. And then here is the print up close is that and this is the back side even the back side's really cool too i love that okay next up i have this piece of upholstery fabric here it's absolutely beautiful it's so rich and so luxe i just love this and the texture is just beyond it's just so fun and it's folded in half so i got a pretty good chunk of this then here's the back side and then here is the front side it's just so pretty and it's a nice heavy weight too so very, very nice. Great for some general covers. Now moving on to the tapestries, I will insert some photos um, as I'm kind of talking about them because these are way too big for me to show full frame um, with my current setup. So. But here's the first one and this one was made in Belgium. Isn't that just beautiful? Look at that. Try to go a little slow so you guys can get a peek at it. I'll do the top half in a second. Isn't that just beautiful? I wish I knew how to weave like that and to do tapestry. I watch a lot of videos on YouTube and follow a bunch of different textile artists and stuff, but it's just beautiful. And then here's the back side. And it is stamped made in Belgium. That is something that they obviously would do when it was made in Belgium. <laughs> Duh, Abby. So it 
it can't, couldn't be um, you know sold as like a reproduction or like a, a fake piece or something. That's what I was told anyway. And here is this other tapestry. It's absolutely beautiful. This one will be a little bit harder for me to show up close, so hopefully you guys can see. And like I mentioned, I'll put some pictures up too. It's just gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Of course, we got some purple detail down there on their rug. And then this one also was made in Belgium, I believe. Yeah, it's kind of faded, but it's there. Made in Belgium. So there's that tapestry. And then this is the biggest of the three that I got. And I definitely will put a picture in because this is like I, this this is bigger, longer than the table I'm um, using right now. So this is half of it. Okay, and there's the top. There's the bottom. Just absolutely gorgeous work absolutely beautiful I'm trying my best you guys to hold this up so you can see it the best that I can I'll move on to the next section and along the top just so much work and detail went into this it's just beautiful 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 I'll flip it over and here's the other half Looks like this gentleman is trying to court this lady who is too busy looking at herself in the mirror. We have another scene here by, looks like, maybe two lovers or something by the wishing well. I don't know, I'm making it up. <laughs> so I have no idea what this meaning was supposed to be. And it has some fringe on the end. And then here's the back side of the tapestry. It's so cool to see the back side of projects. Um, tan done or, you know, done by machine. This is really, really cool to see. The, all the work and the different textures that are on the back side of the um, tapestry or whatever piece that you're looking at. So very happy to have those. And then here is a curtain panel, just a little remnant that I had, that I found. It's so, so, so pretty. Love all the florals in there. And we have the top part of the little curtain panel. So there's that. And then now moving on to the um, different feed sack and flower sack um, towels. So this is some flower sack material and it was, um, the bag was already kind of um, deconstructed when he, he came across it. So that's fine with me because this is just some great fabric for me to be using. So really excited about that. And there's that piece there. And then another piece, this is um, also, I think this also was opened. Let me double check, I can't remember. And it doesn't matter to me if it's already been cut apart or not, um, unless it's like a, a piece I want to collect, you, you know, for my own self. But even then I wouldn't care because, you know, it's old and that's just how it is. So, all right, so it's faded. So this was cut in, ha or like one of the seams was removed, taken apart. And so it's like one long big piece now. This is pretty faded and I think it looks great. And then, oh, you guys, this is just so amazing. Look at these holes, I love them. I'm sure some people are like, um, why would you want to keep something with holes? Well, because they're a wonderful thing. So, we're really happy to have this long bit of fabric. And then, here we have this one. It's RC Royal Crystal Salt Company in Salt Lake City, Utah. This has all the different information on the front there. Really happy about this one. And I believe that this one has also been deconstructed. And look at this material. I just love this so much. It is just so cool. I wanted to get this film so I can start preparing some um, different slow stitch kits that I'm going to be putting out as well as some different projects. I'm going to be incorporating um, some of the different flower sack materials so I wanted to get this done as soon as I could. For that purpose. So there's that one. And then here we have another flower sack. And this one has also been deconstructed. Got this really cool striping. Looks very French. Um, I like that. Really, really pretty. So, love that. And then we have... This one is uh, so nice to touch. Well, they're all nice to touch, but this one has a, um, a little bit uh, rougher texture, and it just, just feels so, so good when you touch it. Now, this bag, I believe, is together. Yeah, this one has not been deconstructed, and it's pretty faded, the branding. Um, let's see what it says here. Morton Hay and Stock Salt. So, I'm not sure if you guys can read that or not, but that's what it says. And this is also from Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, what does that say? Hay and Stock? 
hay and stock I think is what it says I can't read that first word real well but look at the striping on there and the back side is plain I'll show you the fabric up close here if I can get my hand inside to show you what it looks like look at that really awesome texture isn't that just amazing oh I just love it so much all right and then we're down to the last three so this is some bulgur and I know this is some type of wheat um, based off of the different cooking shows my husband and I like to watch <laughs> so anyway so uh, here's this really cool bag and it says donated by the people of the United States of America not to be sold or exchanged and it has the weight and um, it says Kath Kathwell Indonesia I think it says so here's that and here's the back side lot and lot of a really cool branding um, on the back here I just I love this so cool it has, um, has it in all the different languages right there so really nice really nice piece to have and then I think the last two are from the US as well yeah and this is for some all-purpose flour and here's this side here I believe the next one is the same I think um, yeah okay this one actually has the um, print that was missing on the other one well part of it that's missing too but the flower part so yeah this is this is the same all right so for the last item which I was using as my table cover is this beautiful beautiful um, antique petticoat and I can't show you guys this in frame because it's just way too big for, for where I'm filming right now but I will insert some photos So you can see just the just the beautifulness of this. This was completely hand stitched, and when you can see the, the hand stitching inside, it's just it's just amazing. This is just so gorgeous. I was so happy to find this. Brian's one of the many things about Brian's shop that I love is that you kind of have to dig for things, and I love that personally. I, some people, I, I'm sure that it probably drives you nuts because you, know, you kind of want things orderly and whatever and there's nothing wrong with that I like that in the rest of my life because I have OCD but when it comes to this kind of thing when I'm out thrifting and whatnot I like to dig through things and under piles and it's just like a scavenger hunt and so that's how I came across this petticoat and it's just absolutely beautiful you can see the cut work in there it's just gorgeous and some of the stitching is not on point meaning it's not um, perfect like it would be with a sewing machine and that adds to the charm of this being antique and hand sewn so this is a pretty good size petticoat and it's just beautiful beautiful cotton material very happy to have this it'll be a while before I cut this up if I do because I've never owned an antique petticoat before so this is definitely going to be staying in the hoard vault for now the same with the tapestries um, because they're just so beautiful and I just can't bring myself to cutting them up yet all right you guys so this is it I'm going to go ahead and get this video wrapped up so I can um, film a couple more that I want to get done today so I will see you next time and be sure to check out the description box below and I will link the very first um, you know fabric haul video that I got from Brian's store as well as a um, you know pretty brief kind of me walking around the store set to some music because there were other customers in the store so I couldn't really talk and explain stuff to you guys I don't like to film when there's other people around because I don't want to pick up somebody else's conversation just for privacy reasons and whatnot so all right I will see you next time bye